So this um, lecture is, is a short lecture, and it's really important to, for me to do this lecture right now before you really start to try and learn your individual section that you're going to teach to the class. So this is what I call the introduction, or it's probably better a background lecture. This lecture is also what I have on, on the paper is everything you need to know for doing your essay. Or if we were going to have an, a multiple choice exam, which we're not, right? We're just going to do the essay. OK, so right away we start off with prior knowledge, stuff that you guys should already know. Do you guys know what autotrophs are? Yeah, and if you break it down, they automatically, trophs has to do with energy levels, so they automatically make their own energy. Now for this chapter, it's all about what? Did you guys notice in your reading? Maybe looking down at the packet right now? What's this chapter titled, you guys? What is it all about? Chapter 4. Photosynthesis, right? Um, and so that's the type of autotrophs we're going to concentrate on right here. Um, photo means light. So these, the abiotic factor that these autotrophs are using are, is what? What are they using? The, the, the light, and for our biosphere, what are we talking about? The sun, okay? Now I'm doing some artificial thing in my little experiment over here. Okay, so let's talk about the sun. First, you guys know the sun gives off a lot of energy, a lot of radiation. This comes in waves. So if you look down here, you might recall about, do you remember this acronym? Um, oh, no. Thank you. I couldn't remember. I was wanted to say Bob or something. Roy B. Uh, 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 and let me do it, and then I'll get it. Okay, so we got red, right? Orange, what? Yellow, green for the G, blue, you remember these two? Indigo and violet, okay? Now, what's cool is look at the waves. It's trying to show you. So the waves, these colors, when we see them, when they hit our eyes, this, these waves are longer waves. You can see the crest, crest to crest. This is longer waves. And as you move down the light spectrum, this visible light spectrum, the waves get tighter and tighter, so they become shorter waves. What do you think has more energy? Do you think long waves or these shorter waves? It's actually the shorter ones, yeah. And again, it kind of reminds me of, it seems more busy to me, and that's how I remember it. So your plants have been adapted to, to absorb sun. And they want to absorb the sun that is the most efficient for them to get that energy out of. They also want to be like generalists. And I'll show you pigments in a minute. So they absorb a lot of different colors. But if they're green, and most plants are green, our algae is green also, what's the deal here? Are they reflecting or absorbing the green wavelengths. And that's why we see them. They're reflecting it. Okay, so they don't absorb there. And they have two pigments. They have a chlorophyll, well, they have more than two. But the main ones that are green are chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. These molecules absorb the energy from the sun, but they reflect the, wave, the green wavelengths. So that's why we see it. And you guys also know, think of the different colors of plants. They're not all the same green. So you can see where that green would lie there on that spectrum. And th so that's just kind of variety of where they're absorbing. The two different chlorophylls do absorb a little bit in different areas. That makes them able to just collect more energy at, at one time. Oops. <clears throat> Okay, so then let's talk about our fall leaves, which just happens to be nicely timed with it, you know, it being fall um, and now winter. Is it winter yet? Yeah, it's not winter yet. It's still fall. But still, I can see some leaves out there that have changed. Now, what I want you to realize with this is that chlorophyll pigments, these molecules, the green molecules, are water-soluble. Does that make sense? Water-soluble. What do you guys know about paints? 
If you're going to paint outside on your house, for example, do you use water-based paints or do you use oil-based paints? You use oil-based paints because why? So I heard th that it's stronger, protective, it's not going to go away. I heard that the water, water can wash water-based ones away. Are you guys agreeing with all that? And then the, the, do you think the oil paint will also last longer in the sunlight as well? Right? Like, you know, think of dashboards and cars, how they, when they're older, right, they start to lose their color. So the same thing happens. And you can actually see this happening to your leaves over time, right? When they first change colors, and um, then they're brighter colors, and then over time, they get lighter. Or when the leaf falls on the ground, you can see how it looks like it starts to get bleached out, which it's not bleached out. It's just the sun hitting it. But anyway, back to the green. So the green... Um, actually, when the plant decides or gets stimulus that says, okay, let's forget doing photosynthesis right now. Um, let's drop our leaves because it's getting what? Cold, right? And there's not as much sunlight, so let's be efficient. And these are broadleaf plants. They're called deciduous. So they, um, they have lots of water, right? Plants have lots of water moving through them. And what would happen if they tried to do photosynthesis all winter with all that water in those leaves? What would happen to the water as it gets cold, really cold? It's going to freeze. And uh, um, ironically, I don't know if you guys noticed our little blue cactus plant, actually succulent, full of water. I think, unless maybe he got some chemical on it, um, unless we got some chemical on it, but I, it happened about two weeks ago when we st first started getting those really cold nights. So I'm thinking that part of its tissue froze in the evening. Um, and that could have happened. But, um, or just too cold, at least for this plant. So maybe not frozen, fr frozen solid or anything like that. But the heat does kick off and gets pretty cold here in, at nighttime. But anyway, and he's dying because of it. It's a slow, it's already actually being decomposed. There's fungus growing on it. So it's pretty much dead. And it's lost its structure and it's mushy and all sorts of stuff. Okay, but so anyway, so these trees drop their leaves so their leaves don't just freeze, basically. They can't work if they're frozen. And what happens is be, it has accessory pigments. These other pigments are oil-based. They're not water-based. So the chlorophyll washes out. Once, it stop, once the plant stops you know, replenishing the chlorophyll all the time, it goes away in what's left behind. What are these called? Accessory pigments. And why do they stay behind? Because they're oil-based. It's just the molecule. It's not a water molecule. It's, type of wa it's not a polar molecule. It's a non-polar molecule. So it's like an oil. And they can last longer. The, they've been there the whole time. They've just been hidden under the green where there's a lot of it and um, typically a little bit darker. And maybe that's why we see these plants too that ha are that darker green color because you can see the blending of the accessory pig pigments. Okay, we'll talk more um, about chloroplasts because that's the organelle that are in the plant cells that are doing photosynthesis. Um, There'll be a group that's going to teach you about the light reactions, so I'm going to save that. But I wanted to include it in there so that you had it in your notes, just the basic information on these different topics. Somebody else will talk to us about the Calvin cycle. So that's photosynthesis, um, two different processes. So remember that photosynthesis has two different processes that you need to be familiar with. Now real quick, what about rate of photosynthesis? Rate is like speed, how fast something happens. So what does photosynthesis make? Mm, what is, I heard it. Photosynthesis makes what? Food in the form of sugars. So what we're ask, what I'm asking you here then, what's, how do different factors affect that reaction? Okay. Um, is, a lot of light a good idea? Is less light a good idea? What about temperature? What about wind? All these different things that could affect the rate of photosynthesis. We're not going to go into it too much, but I want you to be familiar with some graphs and be able to read the graphs. 
So either look down on your paper or look up here and you can see this is increasing light intensity and this is increasing rate of photosynthesis. So more and more sugar is being produced. What's the trend here? What does that line tell you? What happens as light intensity increases? More photosynthesis is occurring. We're gonna, it's going to make more sugar. And um, we have our little, our little bead thing here going. And um, so we'll see what happens with that. Now, notice, though, does it matter? I mean, if you have light, you know, right? Like, if you look, this is pretty intense on my hands, right? You guys can see it? Compared to where it's hitting the board. Or, you know, the light that is coming closer to the window compared to the light that's right here from the window. Does it seem like it matters? Is there a, a saturation point there? Guys, look at the, the thing here. What's going on here? Is, can you have, is, is more and more light always better? Does it level off? It doesn't seem to matter at one point. And now let's think about that. You got the reaction going. I'm sure that the chloroplasts and the plant cells can only do the reaction so fast. It doesn't matter how much energy you're getting them. And maybe if, if we were to continue with that light intensity, maybe it actually is hindering. Have you guys ever done some gardening or some plant stuff at home where you, you know you have some plants that like more sun than other plants? Where you put them in your house, for example, or outside? Are they in the shade? So it does matter to some plants. Then, what about temperature? What do you guys think? Get an idea in your head. So what's the deal with temperature? Look at the graph. Give me a phrase. Everybody get a phrase right now in your head how you're going to describe that graph. How does temperature affect the rate of photosynthesis? Anybody? Anybody? Uh-huh. Okay, so there is an optimal temperature in this range right here, um, right above 25-ish room temperature, you guys. This is in Celsius. Okay, and then it, hotter it gets, that's a problem. Colder it gets, it slows down. Okay, so now, I think I missed it in the very beginning. Um, sorry, on, I think on one of your first slides there, it was talking about agriculture. So why is this important? Why do we need to understand photosynthesis? Well, this is where we get all our food, right? The other thing, though, photosynthesis also gives the organisms the molecules they need to make all their carbon molecules. Do you guys remember the four macromolecules that life needs? Proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, right? DNA, RNA stuff. So, we, so the trees get their carbon from carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. How do we get our carbon? How do animals get their carbon? Well, what do we do? What do we intake? Oxygen. Is there carbon in oxygen? No, but we do need the oxygen. So how are we getting the carbon? What do we get from the plants? Mm, what are we trying to get when we eat? Carbohydrates. Sugars and glucose. So we have to eat our carbon source. How do the plants get the carbon? From, yeah, kind of like breathing, right? From absorbing carbon dioxide, the gas. Okay? It's kind of abstract because we can't see it. At least we could see our food. Okay? Now, the other huge thing here that you guys, why we have to learn this and why it's so important, is really timely right now. More timely than in my entire career of teaching biology. Because right now, what is a big concern? What's on our minds lately? The whole world's minds. There's, I, I heard there were some um, walks and things like that, I think in Paris this last weekend. What did you guys say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 
Ooh, okay, so El Nino, that's a little component of what I'm talking about, which is, that's for us right here, um, which, yes, is hopefully going to bring us more rain because of the warming of the ocean, uh, or bringing up a current, actually, which is a normal thing, El Nino. It comes in cycles. But what is the world concerned about? What are you guys kind of worried about and scared about? Cli yes, we do have some awful terrorist stuff going on, but I heard some other things too. I heard global warming, and then the more appropriate, more correct name now of what is occurring is not, it goes beyond global warming is what? I heard it. Climate change, they're trying to re-educate us. That's a problem with science. The scientists have to constantly try to keep us educated, and so at first, um, they thought global warming would be a good name, but then as we got more understanding and more research done, more experience, we realized it's not just about getting warmer, it's also about some regions getting what? Colder. It's weather extremes. And this is all based on our atmosphere, which is oxygen and carbon. There's other gases, nitrogen and other things in there. But this carbon-oxygen cycle is all being regulated by photosynthesis and respiration and combustion. So any type of like volcanoes, our burning cars, our factories, then we're burning life, right? So the photosynthetic life that was once around, we are burning and now we're releasing the carbons that way as well. So it's all highly related here, okay? Um, so all the data, <laughs> Um, is that basically we have a nice steady increase of carbon dioxide since 1800. So what's ha what started happening in the eight early 1800 on Earth by us? Well, uh, not cars yet, but other things. What else? Different types of engines and things like that. We were burning stuff, factories. What do we call that? And we're making pollution, the Industrial Revolution. Not ours. Ours didn't happen that early. Ours came a little bit later. So where did it start? Yeah, basically around, around Europe, right? And London's really famous for it because um, of all the pollution. And we had a lot. Then we were a little behind. And now are there Industrial Revolutions going on right now in other countries? Yeah, yeah. Everybody wants this life quality of life like we have and ease and, and fun things. And Okay, this one, real quick, this is not a really important slide except for me to point out that circle this, the photosynthesis that we're going to learn is based on making actually a half a glucose, so a carbon-3 molecule. But I did want to point out to you guys that there are some different types of photosynthesis we don't need to be concerned about it. I just want you to realize that it exists. So that way when you're off in college or in AP Biology, you are like, no, I do remember there was some other ones too. Okay? And it was, they're better adapted for different environments. For example, when there was a lot more oxygen on Earth. Um, and so that photosynthesis process makes a carbon-4 chain. There's also this CAM pathway. And um, some of these also are really good in desert environments. So some of these plants that were doing well in the ancient past, some of them are still surviving and living today, and they do photosynthesis a little bit different. Okay? Let me bring up fossil fuels, because I went over that pretty quick too, which all has to do with this climate change as well and photosynthesis. But fossil fuels are ancient what? Yeah, we got them from animals and plants and all these ancient life, right, that, it, that it's been buried millions of years ago and gotten deeper, and we get gas from that, we get oils from that, we get coal from that, and so it's packed with these carbon bonds that we can easily burn and collect the energy from. And that's the other th reason why we're learning this, too, because, boy, are we energy dependent right now, right? You guys, we're plugging everything in. Every time you guys plug something in, we had to use some of these fossil fuels or some dams. We had to get the energy made somehow or some solar, okay? But we're still highly reliant on the fossil fuels, and that's why some people are out there marching. Okay, we're moving to Chapter 5, which is basically cellular respiration. Now, 
Photosynthesis makes glucose. What's happening here? What is cellular respiration doing? What's it making, you guys? Or what's it breaking? It's a decomposition reaction, so it's breaking down what? The sugars, okay? It's breaking down the glucose. And what is it making? ATP and, again, these carbon skeletons, so those four macromolecules I talked about. Okay, again, I think we've already talked about all that, but it's all very important. Okay, a couple of vocab terms I want to make sure you guys know. Aerobic. When you hear that word aerobic, what do you guys think of? Running, exercises, aerobics, right? Um, and when you're doing aerobics, what are you doing? Breathing. Do you guys need oxygen to do aerobics? Yes. If you are working at a nice steady rate, um, you're working at an aerobic level, you're getting oxygen to all your cells. Every once in a while, you might do some interval training. You might do some sprinting, even some long-term sprinting. And you are not working aerobically anymore. You are working in a way that you, your, the oxygen cannot get to every single cell to do cellular respiration. So your body switches and does it anaerobically. What does anaerobically mean? What does that AN mean when we put it in front of aerobic? It means without oxygen. Aerobic means with oxygen. Okay? So we'll hear more about this, but what the deal is here is there's some organisms that don't even do cellular respiration. Yeast is very simple, for example, some bacteria. They don't need oxygen, and they just do anaerobic respiration, it's called, to make ATPs. <clears throat> they don't make much of it. Um, the cellular respiration makes a lot more. Okay, here is the, the cellular respiration equation. I didn't give you the photosynthesis one, but can you see the photosynthesis one in there? Let's go this way first. Respiration. Glucose and oxygen breaks it down to carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Energy in the form of what? ATPs. What's photosynthesis? Energy from what? The sun, water, carbon dioxide makes what? Oxygen and, if you know one, do you know the other? Hello? Do you? They're opposites, aren't they? They're the inverse of each other. Now, I do want to point out, when, when I do get you to write the photosynthesis equation down, the, actually, photosynthesis is making that carbon-3, remember? It's, photosynthesis makes a half a glucose, but then those two halves, they're called pyruvate, can actually bond together to be a glucose if that's what it needs. If it doesn't need it, it'll, it'll work with the half of glucoses, and I'll show you that more later. <clears throat> okay, so how many stages were in photosynthesis? How many processes were in photosynthesis? Light reactions and Calvin cycle. How many? Two. How many are in respiration? Three. Now, I've gi I'm giving you these numbers so that you can help, so it'll help you rem um, memorize them. Also, especially for writing your essay. Then you can go, oh, did I talk about two in that one? Did I talk about three in that one? And you can make sure you didn't forget something. Okay, so we have glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. They are also very similar to the other processes. You'll see that when we come through the completion of your guys' teaching stuff. So again, I put these up here. This is what, the, what you need to for sure know, um, and we'll hear from those groups. Okay, we are almost done here. Um, that kind of goes over everything um, with comparing the two. And again, these last two sentences. The products of photosynthesis, oxygen and carbohydrates, are the raw materials for respiration. Then respiration, in turn, provides the raw materials for photosynthesis. I'm hoping you guys are seeing that. All right, I think you survived. Um, 